How's it going all you mentees? It is Sunday, so that means it is time for an omnibus retro view. Even though it's really not that retro, because this book literally came out last month. But I didn't do an overview of it, so let's do it now. And welcome back everybody. Before I get started, a huge thank you to David Gabriel and the folks at Marvel for sending us a copy of this omnibus. As I've mentioned, it's already been out for a couple of weeks in the direct market and comes out in the book market on December 9th. Now, this isn't the first time we've had a Thanos omnibus. Uh, we've had Thanos before, such as the case of the Thanos Wars, the Infinity Origin. And this is pretty much the beginnings of the Thanos storyline. If you want to know where he started out at, uh, where the Thanos helicopter came from, and before the events of the Infinity Gauntlet, this is what you need to read. This is the creator Jim Starlin coming back and writing and drawing a lot of his creation stories. Now, when does this take place? Well, we'll talk a little bit about that here in a second. But first, let's talk about the book. Now, this is the standard edition cover, the direct market cover on the left-hand side here by Del Kion. Uh, that one's only sold through the direct market, so places like your local comic book shop, CheapGraphicNovels.com, Instock Trades, Tales of Wonder. Places like that are the only place you can get that cover. So this is a pretty basic cover, and I say basic because it literally is just the Mad Titan's face, and it's Jim Starlin's artwork. And here we have the spine of the omnibus and then the back of the omnibus so it's just thanos hanging out with a bunch of characters from the cosmic universe and ant-man and nightcrawler and hulk because all those characters show up and up here you can tell the curve of the book so you can tell how the page bunches are going into the inner spine and we'll talk more in detail here in a little bit about the build of this omnibus but let's look at it under the dust jacket. So you have this splash image by Ron Lim of Adam Warlock and Thanos. All right, let's get this opened. Okay, we have purple bookend pages. So the skin tone of the Mad Titan, Thanos, the Infinity Saga. And let's pause here for a second because we got to do a couple things. So this is another book that was printed by the IMAX Offset, which is in Turkey. They're the ones that did the Conan Kurt Busiek Omnibus, and the ones that did the Uncanny X-Men Volume 2 that I did an overview of. Now let's look at the content. So it kicks off with Thanos Annual Number 1, and ends with the Thanos Infinity Ending. And all of this is in chronological reading order, not publishing order, because some of these miniseries took place in between um, some of these graphic novels. So, three... Original graphic novels are the first half of the storyline, which is the Infinity Revelation, Infinity Relativity, and the Infinity Finale. And then Jim Starlin decided to come back and give us another trilogy of original graphic novels. And that's where the Infinity Siblings, the Infinity Conflict, and the Infinity Ending took place. So the other stuff that's collected in here, it's kicking it off with the Thanos Annual, and this is the direct market cover that I showed earlier. But we also have the Thanos vs. Hulk miniseries which is a four issue miniseries and then the guardians of the galaxy mother anthropy miniseries which is five issues and then everything else are those graphic novels so we have this kick-ass art of ron Lim right here and this story pretty much goes through thanos's biggest conquest and biggest storyline so by now you have had to read the original infinity trilogy so when i suggest reading this some of y'all have asked me like when does this take place is it necessary so those are two different questions so when to read this that's the first question we'll tackle those original graphic novels were coming out around the time that bendis was writing guardians of the galaxy and then through jerry duggan's run so that's when to read them honestly if you've read the cosmic saga the new cosmic saga by dan abden and andy lanning i think you're going to be okay because this takes place afterwards, but it's literally Jim Starlin doing his own thing. So these original graphic novels that were coming out, and these original graphic novels were, were thick. They were in hardcover edition, and they were in trade paperback edition eventually, but they're bigger than your standard size comic book. You know, your standard size comic book is about 22 pages, sometimes a little less, sometimes a little more, but the graphic novels ranged anywhere from about 112 pages to about 120 and. I just wanted to show off some more of this Ron Lim artwork here. This splash page, which I'm sure we'll come back to. But 
that's when this took place. Now, the second question I've been asked a ton is, is it necessary to read this? These stories really don't impact the overall Marvel Universe. They had nothing really to do with the big events like the Infinity Wars that, that Jerry Duggan wrote. Or for that matter, Donny Cates' run on Guardians of the Galaxy. Or Lemire or Cates' run on Thanos. As a matter of fact, Jim Sterling didn't really get to finish his original trilogy uh, because he thought he was going to be writing the new Guardians of the Galaxy run featuring Thanos. And instead they gave him his graphic novels to write. So he came back and that's why we got the Infinity ending toward, uh, towards the end instead of that Infinity cliffhanger, which is the Infinity finale. So, what's the... Pr and this is Jim Starlin's artwork, by the way. Which, freaking awesome to this day. Like, I realize that it's Andy Park inking his stuff, but we'll look at some pencils here towards the back because I've read this whole thing. That's why it took me so long to do an overview of this book because I had no idea what this was. I've only read, like, a couple of these one-shots. I hadn't even read the miniseries here that I was looking at, which is Hulk, which is just pretty much Pip... Uh, Helping out Annihilus and kidnapping the Hulk so he can brainwash the Hulk to fight for him, Annihilus. And he knows he made a mistake, so that's why he goes and gets Thanos. So it's an interesting story. It is very much like Pip the Troll to do something like that. But this artwork by Jim Starlin, man, that dude still has it to this day. Now let's keep going with some of the other stuff because Jim Starlin draws a lot of it. So does Ron Lim. And then we get... The amazing and legendary Alan Davis coming in to draw the final three um, graphic novels. So there's a lot of characters that appear throughout all these series that if you're familiar with, that's why I suggested reading at least the Infinity Gauntlet and then the Thanos beginnings. But if you really want to read everything, then I would read at least all the way through the DNA Cosmic Saga. Here's the Mother Anthropy miniseries, which Thanos does appear in this but he's not the prominent protagonist it's more of the guardians and you get his brother back star fox not to be confused with do a barrel roll that guy but he does go back and touch on some of the classic thanos stories which is what i enjoyed about this it, it felt like the writer coming home and writing his character and kind of ignoring a few things that have been going on so it almost feels like x-men forever like, I don't know if anybody had read Chris Claremont's X-Men Forever. It's not really a pocket universe because this really could have taken place in the Marvel 616 universe. But it feels like it's just a standalone stories that it doesn't really affect the overall run of Guardians of the Galaxy or Thanos by Lemire or Cates, for that matter. But my favorite thing through here, though, is all these just Easter eggs and all these guest stars from the Cosmic Universe... Uh, see and see what I mean. He even includes the Black Order, which first appeared in the pages of Infinity. So I guess you would have to read Infinity. So sorry, at least Infinity then, not just the DNA run. But I, what I was saying is that I enjoyed all the Easter eggs and appearances by all the cosmic characters that I hadn't seen in a long time, like the Living Tribunal, the Stranger, uh, Infinity. And Star Fox, of course, Adam Warlock, who plays a big role in this. All the Guardians of the Galaxy. And there's even a council. I mean, some parts were kind of... How do I put it? Um, a little dull. Because it's just this meaning of Council of Cosmic Beings that... I, I, even when I was a kid, I was annoyed by all these characters that existed. That were just omnipotent beings that were like gods hovering around the universe. And... To this day as an adult now, I, I still get a little bored when they have meetings and talk. For a full issue, just about. But let's keep going back here towards the extras. The book, by the way, has 976 pages and retails for $100. So you have all these afterwards, all the forwards by Jim Starlin, different creators. Warren Ellis is in there. You have variant covers here by Ron Lim. The original artist, well... He did some of the Infinity Gauntlet, because George Perez started it, and then Ron Lim finished it. And then he also went on to do Silver Surfer. Well, no, he was drawing Silver Surfer at the time. He was drawing like eight comic books in a month at the time. And he went on to do the Infinity War and Infinity Crusade. But here's some more variants by Ron Lim. 
It's always good to see his name show back up. And this is what I meant that I wanted to show you all was the artwork. This is the original pencils by Jim Starlin. And then you have Andy Ink inking his pencils. But the pencils, Starlin, the man still has it. He hasn't lost it at all. There's Kang, Nightcrawler. They, all the Marvel characters show up in this. Now this is Alan Davis. Pencils we're looking at here. And I'm not going to show all of them. Let's see if there's anything extra in the back. Okay. And then we have the back covers to those final graphic novels. Little bios on the creators. And that's it. Now let's talk about the binding. Okay, so here is the eye. This is what it looks like. But one thing I noticed was the paper quality is thinner than the Uncanny X-Men Volume 2 that I did an overview of. So this feels like the Kurt Busiek Conan omnibus uh, paper quality. So it's a little thinner. Um, now, as far as the gutter loss, let's look at a splash page. I told you all we would come back to this page and there is some gutter loss right here. Of course, this is the first issue. This is the first annual that kicks it off. So, you know, in some Omnis, we're used to that. But then there are other Omnis that are built better that there's no gutter loss or very minimal. But this one has, you know, significant ones if you have to pull it down to read the word bubbles right up here. I know that doesn't bother some people, but it does bother others. So I do want to point that out. Let's get to the middle here. Okay, so here's a good splash page of all the cosmic characters. We're about 350 pages or so in to the book. You can see the sewn binding there. So that's always a good sign when it comes to splash pages. But there's still just, I don't know what it is, a little bit of gutter loss right there. Just a little bit, very minimal on that page. Here's another splash page from around the same place. And just wanted to show you, I mean, minimal, but looks like you have to push down to see the entire picture. Like I said, that is just letting everybody know. I know it doesn't bother some people. And then towards the end here, and this is where I think if you want to see the whole skull, you have to push down on it. So if that bothers you, this may not be for you. But that, as they say, is that. Now, if you're interested in purchasing this book, please don't forget to check out our sponsor, CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for brand new graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off the cover price. Cheap Graphic Novels prides itself on packaging your books so they arrive safely and in excellent condition, as well as prompt and helpful service. Beginning Thanksgiving morning, visit their bargain bin for Black Friday deals up to 90% off cover price. New items will be added throughout the day and the rest of the holiday season. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with the kind of deep discounts, quality shipping, and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. And that was the page count, the content, and the build of this particular omnibus. Let me know in those comments down below if you've picked it up. Up. If you haven't picked it up yet, if you didn't know what it was, if you didn't know when to read it as far as the Cosmic Saga, I'd love to know all those comments down below. And if you have any more questions, please leave those in the comment section. I will get back to it eventually, promise. Now, more importantly, please everybody, hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet, ring that bell for notifications. We can be found on Patreon and Redbubble, great ways to support the channel if you can do so. And thank you to our existing patrons. More importantly, please everybody, stay healthy, stay safe and much love to all of you.